Hello and welcome to Mocha in the Morning where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. I am your host, Keisha Boyd, and this is my co-host officially, Jorge. Good morning, girl. Good morning, girl. Hi. How are you? I'm fabulous. I see that you are back from the Billboard Awards. Yes, I, I cannot know. wait to hear all about it. It was super, super cute. Had a I'm fabulous sure. time. I kind of feel like I'm still there. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you all about it. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but, but first, Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. That was if we would have said that same time. Right. Yeah, that yeah. Right. And welcome back to Mocha in the Morning. We are here and ready to get you started up with our steamers. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and do I have some for you today? Because I know we want to talk about all the fabulosity yes. from the Billboard Awards, but yes. steamers come first. Uh -huh. um, okay, so for the congressional candidate, John Ward. And who uh, is this person? Exactly. Who is this person? <laughs> Uh, the Orlando Sentinel is reporting mm -hmm. that, of course, he was uh, caught on YouTube. And I don't even want to say caught. Yeah. Because he, he said it. He was, it wasn't he was caught. Well, basically, he's stating that um, that the Puerto Ricans should go back to where they came from. Oh, really? He doesn't think that they should be allowed to vote in the upcoming election. Really? Right? And so he's obviously getting some pushback. Uh, obviously, and he should. Right. And the thing is, this is in the Orlando area, the, mm -hmm. the 6th District. And so the thing is, like, uh, the Orlando area, Central Florida area, is becoming, like, Puerto Rico number two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the Kissimmee area. So anyways, he needs to watch his mouth. Yes, he does. Because there's a lot of power in voting. It's going to cost him an election. It, it, and it should. Yeah, I would intentionally move to Orlando right now. Just, just so to do yeah, that. just to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll keep you guys up to date yeah, on that. Because I'm sure there's going to be more. Yeah. And, and the other steamer, mm -hmm. uh, of course, is the NF hashtag fail. fail. Uh, they just came out uh, and ruling that or creating this new rule. But now the players are not allowed to kneel during the anthem during the football games. So they can't kneel if they're on the field. They'll allow them to stay in the locker room. Right. But... This is a thing where this is I crazy. it is crazy because for me, this is how I see it. I see it as a minority person saying that a white man, again, it's again. like, I'm going to allow you to make all this money, but I still get to control what you do. Absolutely. Period. And I think at the end of the day, it's like this struggle of authority yep. and power. And we're compromising, you know, the Constitution and our rights. Yeah. And I, it, it's terrible. I so the reason why it's a steamer is because I know when like this is going to come back up into piping hot Absolutely. when football season starts. Absolutely, mm -hmm. As, and I, I look forward to following it because when the majority of your players, yeah, are minority, yeah. I think you need to pay attention to what they're saying. Yeah, if not, then I hold it on the players to step up to the plate and do something about it. I'd be like, sorry, I'm not going to be on the field. Absolutely. Period. I have right. a player strike or something. But anyways, I just know those are like all hot and steamy. Correct. All right. We'll be right back after this word from the portico. Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. to come and sometimes we can find it easy to forget about the solid ground beneath our feet but we must remember that we're in the state where the red clay gives life to generations of dreamers the state where Martin when Martin marched on ballot boxes and challenged a nation's conscience A Georgia that gave us the godfather of soul, the queen of the Met, and sent a peanut farmer to the Oval Office. That is our Georgia. We are back with Mocha in the Morning, and it is time for Piping Hot. And there are lots of 
<laughs> piping hot things going on. Before we get started, let me introduce our correspondents for this week. As usual, we have Miss Kia with us. Hi, Kia. Guys, you look so beautiful, so Thank glamorous. You. And Thank we also, you. <laughs> and we Kia. also have Megan. Hey, girl. She's hey. from the West Coast. West Coast. Yes, from one, sh- <laughs> from one sunshiny state to the other. That's right, girl. So we have lots of things to talk about. We're glad that you two are joining us for good conversation as we do every week. First thing up, Stacey Abrams. Back on Magic Celebrate. Yes. Ah. So Miss Stacey Abrams is now the Democratic nominee for the governor's seat in Georgia. The first time in history a black woman has this position. I am so happy. And it'll be like the first like woman like ever, period. Ever, ever. Uh, if she wins, it'll yeah. be like the governor. When she wins. When she wins. That's right. Uh, for, and this was supposed to be like a steamer because, and then the election happened. And, and it's then like, it's like, boom, bam. <laughs> I was like, oh, piping hot right piping away. Hot, that's right. So congratulations to, to Stacey Abrams. We certainly look forward to this monumental and historic win for her. And it's also going to trickle down to our state because we have who I believe should be our next governor, uh, Andrew Gillum. Yeah, who is out of Tallahassee, the youngest mayor in Tallahassee's Let's history. Do it. Let's do and he's also a rattler, and my brother, and I'm supporting him. See. So I'm excited. How do you guys feel about this new age and in, in, in the new faces and in, in, in the young folks taking over the, the political scene? Megan? Yes. I mean, I'm all about black people winning, so... <laughs> <laughs> So anytime, I don't care who it is, as long as you're winning, I'm all for it. Absolutely. Kia? I know, for me, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that we have never had a black female governor before. I had thought we had had one, I guess, Louisiana or something like that, but we have never had one. Possibly in those states. We're talking about in Georgia. Well, no, I think like period. Period? Yeah, like across the board. It's it's ever, yeah, it's ever. She will be the first ever black female governor of a state yeah oh awesome and so like you being the republican on the panel yeah um you know she's not um a republican she's you know uh diehard democrats but you're still good with the whole thing i think the problem with i am a republican hardcore republican the problem is the problem with this administration is that it is going to take democrats to get him out of the office so that we can finally get a real conservative in there so i'm all for this wave of democrats so that republicans can realize the donald trump route will never be the right route and never do this ever again ever there you go ever, ever. I, I like that i like that point i do i, like I that do point. yes all right so let's move on talking about Harry and Meghan. I know. Oh, we the just royal wedding. <laughs> okay, so before we get into it, we're gonna like roll a clip. Yes. We're gonna roll a clip of um of some of the fashion yeah. that happened during the wedding, but more like about the hats. Uh huh. And of course, it's kind of like the royal mocha moment of hats. That's right. <laughs> so check out the clip, and then we'll come back in a little kiki about everything else. <laughs> The fascinators. We were fascinated by yeah. the fascinators, right? I kind of right? feel like we should have worn one. Oh, you know what? That would have been cute. That would have been cute because I have one ready to go, but that's okay. The we next world wedding that we go to. Right. You know. <laughs> but everything was very... I was so impressed with the integration of diversity in this royal wedding. I mean, come on. You have... The brother up here doing the... What? The, the, I'm like, come on. He had, the the iPad, he had the iPad in the church. Talking about, you know... You know, the antebellum South and slave. I was like, come on, Megan. Come with it. I was so yeah. impressed. I and really all the other subtle little things that happened, too, that was so major attention to detail. Yeah. Now, Megan, I know you were in New York while all this was going down. So yes. tell me what you thought about the whole thing. I thought it was freaking amazing. Um, first off, I have to say, fairy tales do come true. Like, this is Meghan Markle. I'm sure in a million years never thought that she would be standing there. 
um, and the fascinators. I believe she was an Indian Indian actress or model. She wore Priyanka. purple. Priyanka. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, she was absolutely stunning. Absolutely freaking stunning. The wedding was just beautiful. I love the diversity within the wedding. It was amazing. It was phenomenal. I cried, of course, <laughs> but um, just watching it, I loved every moment of it. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And Go ahead. What'd you say? Go ahead. No, no, finish. But um, did you guys see on social social media um, Idris Elba's? Yeah, uh, Beyonce. We did. Yes! Wait, but what did y'all think though? Did you like her outfit? No. No. <laughs> Girl, okay. wait, why did you like her outfit? She did okay. not. We just don't have this little pe moment of petty as a group. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. It was 50% white, British, whatever, 50% black in the mix. Who cares? That outfit that girl wore was ridiculous. <laughs> Who wore that dress to that kind of event? Like you were going to the BET Awards. That was a Gucci, Gucci pattern dress. It was Gucci pattern first. Shoes, the sweater, the dress. Girl, you were so matchy matchy. It looked you just wanted to be seen. Is yes. that the source awards? Did nobody else have on no matchy matchy Gucci outfit? Where are you going? I was embarrassed as a black woman. I was. Well, you know what? And I'm, I kinda, I'm glad that you feel that way because you know me, I'm a huge Gucci fan. Yes, yes. But is. the thing is, like, that was very resort, Tacky. brunchy, casual. <laughs> Girl, that's a. I mean, if anything, I'm pretty sure like probably her seat covers were probably Gucci. Everything. <laughs> well, hopefully and the she funny thing is, wait, one more thing, you guys. Did anybody else notice that nobody else at the wedding was wearing labels? No one else was no wearing one. label sign. Just mm. her. Yeah. All right. That was uh, that was the main thing that bothered me. I'm like, why does she have to be the black one that wears labels? Just slay in that, something yeah, that, that is expensive but doesn't have to show the label. All right, well, lesson learned. Let's move on. <laughs> Billboard Music Awards. Jorge, this is yours. This is oh. your segment to tell us how what happened. Oh my god, so the Billboard Music Awards at the MGM Grand were so amazing and awesome. Talk about talk about all the moments that were happening. There were like Me Too moments. There were Mocha moments. There were like these Empower Women moments. The performances were like, I mean, to be there in person and be like, oh my God, like she could like really sing, 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 sing. Or wow, she's like dropped it gorgeous. Or to see like all the antics that all the celebrities were doing like in the first four rows. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, the BTS army, okay, BTS, Korean pop group, taken over the world. I've never seen anything like it. It was insane. It reminded me of like when Michael Jackson goes to Japan and everybody just like is out of control. It was very that. Wow. Janet, her speech left me gagging and um, got everyone together. Uh, <laughs> Kelly Clarkson was awesome hosting. She was yes, just so fun. Is. The other performances that stood out, like I saw the JLo concert the night mm -hmm. before. And then JLo came out with a whole new show. I was like, when did she have the time to put all this like together? She's all about the dinero. I love all that. And she looked good. Oh and she Lord. looked amazing. They all looked really. Both her, she and Janet uh, are yeah, just all like, of them. And then, oh my God, and then Saul and Peppa. So for me, because I haven't seen an award show in nine years. Uh -huh. And it's funny because that's the last time Janet. that Janet was um, you oh, know, mm -hmm. on live TV. And so I watch it, and I was so impressed with all the new artists. But I have personal highlights. Because yes. Facebook tried to shut me down, so I couldn't live, whatever. So these are my personal highlights from the show. Take a look. From my camera, from where I was at. I'm out. You. There. Take a look.
your moments were hilarious. You're always like the best person to watch as a host. Love you. My favorite moment that was Kelly Clarkson doing that medley of songs at the beginning. That I thought was dope. It shows her range, how fun she is, how she gets all music genres. Loved it. That was great. Megan, did you get a chance to watch it? Or me? I did not, but I got a chance to watch you See, and love yeah. those. What did you call them? Meggings? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, my Meggings. Yes. They were so tight and so gold. And you, what did you say? Your your thought your thighs are like gold fr golden fried drumsticks. Right. I die laughing. See? I was like only Jorge. The, a little bit of drama though. A little bit of drama. Paris Jackson apparently oh, yes. was uh, her management and um, and her family did not inform her of her aunt Janet's like award kind of thing. So she didn't know anything about it because she lives under a rock mm -hmm. and she doesn't watch TV or read the news or is Girl, on social media. Please always want to be starting something. Uh, <laughs> nice. That was it. a good. I love it. That was awesome. Mm. All right, now let's talk about starting something. This yes. Whitney Houston <gasps> yeah. production that yes. is being filmed. And we have a trailer for it. Too. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Well, well, first of all, tell us a little bit about it, and then we'll throw it to the trailer. Yeah. Well, this is the tea uh, with the Whitney Houston um, documentary that's coming out on Showtime. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually like got the seal of approval from her family. Wow. And it goes that's big. into yeah a lot of things that I had no idea you know, was going down with Whitney as far as like, you know, um, her early drug usage and the allegations of like, you know, extramarital affairs. Um, and so, but at the same time, I almost kind of think that it was, it ends up being a sad story because you're like, you know, it was so much like talent. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know, some of the, a lot of shocking stuff is coming out uh, with this documentary, but her family like still of approval. Have you seen I mean, anything about that? I have. I've, I've actually, the sad thing about it is that everybody's always thought Janet lived this great Christian girl life. And now it's slowly, Whitney, year after year, Whitney. we find out some new awful thing about her childhood and about her life that makes you realize, oh, this is why, you know, she went to drugs. This is why she acted like this. And, you know, it's that the molestation claim, to me, it's not new. I've heard it before. But now that it's mainstream and her family's OK with it, that's a little, a little interesting to me. Right, and the beef between like her mm -hmm. personal assistant and friend Robin Crawford and Bobby Brown, it was like a love triangle thing. At least that's what is coming out. And have you heard about that part, Megan? So one thing, like I struggle with like these documentaries or like memoirs of a star like Whitney Houston because I'm just like after they pass, like I don't like the fact that they bring all these things to light. Like I rather a person just like rest in peace with the great legacy that they've sought out to live you know not to bring all of this like air out all their dirty laundry now that they're not here to defend themselves mm -hmm. if that makes like any sense but i think it's really so, interesting I'm, too about this, i'm sorry about this documentary is that like um you know the whole mission of making her cross over to a pop scene instead of staying like you know true to her mm -hmm. roots with the black r&b music and how that's a struggle and i think that happens um across the board to a lot of us people of color mm -hmm. you know when we're, yes. we are on our quest to being successful sometimes we have mm -hmm. to like compromise you know our you know our value system yeah. right and who we are yeah, just to, to be it. able to get some light but it's Oh, it's such a fine line. I think we're moving far past from that, considering that R and B and hip hop music is like the most successful genre of music today. Um, so we're getting to a point where we don't have to not not do that anymore. All right. well, yeah. Okay. So just to expand about what we were talking about, Whitney Houston, this documentary is supposed to be what was supposed to be always out about Whitney. Um, you know, we had that little Lifetime movie they had uh, with that starred, you know, the girl from American Next Next Top Model, but this documentary is really, really captured who Whitney Houston was. But I agree with Megan. I feel bad about all these important facts coming out after someone's died instead of when they were alive. Like Bobby and assistant and Whitney having this threesome love affair, this whole polyamorous relationship. If they did, fine. That's really not that salacious. I feel like the cousin Dee Dee Warwick molesting her is kind of a, a the main part that I was just kind of caught off guard by because I feel honestly like Whitney Houston's mother is the cause of her downfall. There's a lot of bad things that happened to her and I feel like her mother was not there to protect her as much as she should have. Ooh. That's what moms do. That's what we yeah. do. Our job is to be there to protect our children. 
and I and I kind of think I um, maybe this documentary is her way of kind of cleansing. Anyways, but let's talk about. Um, um, so you said love affair, okay? Let's talk about this beautiful love affair that we were all having with these two lovebirds that just totally secured on a lock, right? A deal with Netflix, and you know I'm talking about no other than our president. Barack Obama and his wife, Michelle Obama, the first lady fabulousness. Yay! Netflix. It's like a whole new meaning to like Netflix and chilling. You know what I mean? They're like Netflix it, it really and dealing. Is. <laughs> I love it. What do you think, Megan? I love it. No, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. It's like anything that they're on, it's just, they're amazing. I love everything that they do. Just them being present, I love it. You know how what um there's two people people are talking about them Beyonce and the Obamas like you can't <laughs> right so anything they do it's never wrong in my eyes <laughs> no, but it did it did come with its fair share of backlash a lot of conservatives it did. I do run with that circle a lot of conservatives are tired of them yeah. saying they're criminals they should be arrested that they're tired of them the money what? they're saying all this jibber jabber and saying that they're going to drop Netflix. I feel like conservative has boycotted everything but air and water at this point. So if you're good, Republicans, you're going to go, go. Trump supporters, you're going to go, go. No one cares. Nobody has even said that the Obamas were going to be in the shows. It no. just they signed a deal. Those are two different things. Shonda Rhimes signed a deal with Netflix. We ain't seen her on that. So it's, it's exactly. But what's the issue with them doing what they want to do? Why is that an issue? Right, like, exactly. That's what I'm confused I, I, about. I Why is it? Why yeah. are they making it a big deal? And I think what I'm going to do, instead of using the word conservative, um, because I don't think, you know, that conservatives, you know, operate in this way. I'm just going to say no. that um, this is just the way that racists behave. And this is the way that haters behave. And this is Trump the way that, that, yeah, and this is the way that colonizers behave. You know, you don't want to see anyone else you know, be successful, and and, and that's what it is. Because I, th I do think that there are some people who consider themselves to be conservatives who do not like, like, why, how could you not congratulate this? They don't think that way. So I think what's happened is, is that that particular group of people has been infiltrated and taken over by the racists and the haters and the colonizers um, and the xenophobic people of this country. But this is more like Netflix and winning. How do you like that? I like that Netflix and winning because I feel like it's Netflix winning because they know everybody. The second they drop a show, everybody's gonna flock to it. It's not like everybody flocked to that raggedy ass movie uh, when they, about their first date. That movie was awful. Did anybody care? I no, yeah. not one person, and it was horrible. There you go. I agree. It wasn't that great at all. <laughs> at all. But also, why can't the Obamas just like? everyone gets to a certain point in their life where they're reinventing themselves. Like, he's not the president anymore. She's not the first lady. This is a part of their life that they're like, they want to do something different. And that's totally fine. Yeah, so it's, it's not like they're selling, like, ties and vodka and airplanes <laughs> and, you know, hair products and shoes. You know, they're actually kind of invested in humanitarian type of things. But speaking of, like, um, fabulous humans uh, and this mm. is for the ladies <laughs> so michael b jordan is on the cover of essence oh i'll I, I hear snaps so I'll, <laughs> I'll let the ladies take over on this part all i know that like when it came to black panther i was more like on the bad guy side after like he took off all his wakandaness and you saw like all that but that's all i'm gonna say i'm gonna let y'all go with that <laughs> I I mean the man is shut up Jorge I see you laughing at me there there are no words the man is gorgeous he's a very very handsome man and he's so fine and such a part of Black Panther he died in the movie spoiler alert but they're trying to figure out a way to put him in the sequel and I'm like Ryan Coogler how is it supposed to happen but women love him so much he's so hot and I love it that he's secretly hot because when he had his clothes on, he was like that little boy that lives down the street. Like, go get Javon to go tell your mama da 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 da. Like, he looks like that boy around the corner. And then when he pulls his shirt off, it's like, oh, yeah, Magic Mike, 
you can get it any point, any day. I will take this wedding ring off and just do you right here in my driveway. Ooh, okay, all right. But speaking of driveways, <laughs> now this is the, so you don't want to be caught in the car with Kia, but she will definitely love to be caught in the driveway with him. But um, <laughs> this is, you know, what I think is really cool about him is that he was one of the first uh, actors and entertainers to step up and say, listen, if I'm going to work in your project, I'm going to need like an inclusion writer, which means that there's going to be like a certain amount of diversity uh, on the projects that he is going to be working on. And I think that's like really cool. And that's why he's only done certain projects. Anybody's noticed he hasn't been in a ton of movies, but he's been in a ton of movies that have won a lot of awards. Like Creed yeah. was also directed by Ryan Coogler yeah. and had a lot of black writers. He was also in Fruitvale Station, where it's okay. kind of he got his notoriety from. That was, I think that was written by an African-American person. And my producer's mouthing something to me, and I have no idea what she's saying, so it's fine. Do I need to, it's hold right. on, don't look at the screen. What is it? That's also Ryan Coogler. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're good, yeah. Now, um, he's still dating a white girl, right? I think. I don't know if that's such a thing. Is he with a white girl? <laughs> well, one no, of our he's not. One of our producers no, said not. that he was. And oh, I know some uh, things. No. Sometimes a you know, can make a black no. woman go sideways. No, he's not. You see, we're both saying it like we're hoping he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he cannot oh, be. He, he's, no, 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 no. There's no way. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I'm just double checking really quick in the video box. <laughs> and he is not. It actually was rumored for a long time that he was dating Lupita because they got real close and comfy during the making of Black Panther. Oh, I love and her. I feel like that. I would say cool. what. But if he's dating a if he's dating a black girl, if he's dating a white girl, it's fine. We will all be supportive, sorta, you know. <laughs> but we yay black mixed people love. I feel like you know what. I'm talking about, but I'm gonna say this. I feel like Megan and Harry opened up this whole new door where black women now have to be supportive for it if it's interracial. We can't just be one-sided. So if he's gonna date a white girl, as long as he's happy and he keeps making movies and taking his shirt off, we're fine. Considering Kia, yeah. the two of us, ladies of color, are in interracial relationships. What? <laughs> and I'm, I'm, in I'm in an interracial relationship, but my husband looks black. Like you've all seen my husband. <laughs> He does though. My husband looks black. He's Indian, but he's darker than he's I am. Black. Yeah. Yeah. My husband he looks does. Like a black not. guy my with hus- a really good yeah. perm. Yeah. My husband is probably whiter than this light beaming on top of my forehead. <laughs> and on <laughs> that you know, I want to well, thank well, Cop in the Car with Kia. Thank you, girl. And Megan at work. Miss Megan out from LA. Thank you for joining us on Mocha in the Morning with all of our steamers and piping hot topics. And have a fabulous weekend. Don't go anywhere because when we are back, We're going to have a fabulous mocha moment for you. This segment is brought to you by BlackInTheBay.com, your online connection to everything that's Black in the Bay. Log on now for news, updates, and events. What does she mean to you? She's the greatest female entertainer of the 20th century. So much soul and so much spirit. There was Lena Horne, there was Dionne Warwick. But if the mantle is to pass to somebody who's got an incredible range of talent, but guts and soul, it will be Whitney Houston, in my opinion. Nobody could touch Whitney as far as singing. They said, Mom, she taught Whitney everything she knew about how to use that voice. You had three places to sing from. Heart, mind, guts. She learned them all. She was simple. She became Whitney Houston when it was time for her to get on stage. People think it's so damn easy, and it's not. Don't walk away from me. All of the things coming at her, she just wanted to escape the pressure. say anything you wanted to say to her, what would you say? I love you, Whitney. Everybody loved her. She was a little girl wishing upon a star. I was trying to find my way back home. Everyone has 
a moment and our mocha in the morning we have a mocha moment so check out this little delicious piece of chocolate Thank you for watching Mocha in the Morning. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Go ahead, thank him, girl. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. You got it? Yeah. Yay! You did it. Yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs>